Oh, I wonder if I didn't press the record button. Hello, peoples, and welcome to another unboxing video. Ooh, it sounds like there's so many. There's two. Um, today we're going to unbox this box with vintage feathers. There's a few new ones. Most of them are ostrich feathers, those big long ones everybody loves. So let's see if I can do this without knocking the camera. Oh, and I closed it all the way. Oh no. <laughs> Dead <at> this. <laughs> people and welcome to another unboxing video from our studio in Aurelia. Uh, this box contains mostly vintage ostrich plumes and a few other little treasures. I'm going to show you what's in it and some really interesting things that they used to do to feathers almost 100 years ago. Some are a teeny bit older and then you can see the difference between the old ones and the new ones. So, firstly, So, ostrich feathers, as a lot of people might remember, they're like this, the really fluffy ones, and they've been really popular. There's a million things you can do with them. This is a modern ostrich feather, uh, not one of the really big ones. Uh, we're not in the habit of wearing really big feathers um, lately, and I'm going to just show you. This is another modern one that has had some, like, a war? I don't know what happened to it. But in the past, there were much thicker plumes. And this is the tail feather and the wing feather, um, and just the longer feather. This is the tip of the feather, and as you can see, it's a little thicker. This is a higher quality feather. And it has this interesting marking, which I think is its original marking off the bird. This feather, isn't super old. It's about maybe 30 years old, so it would still be considered a modern feather. It's another modern feather. Now, I'm going to get further down. And this one is another maybe 30 or 40 years old. It's starting to show signs of wear. You can see these lines here. Slightly lower quality feather, but also it wears at those points, and that's you see it in an even pattern, so that's just sort of the natural thing that happens to feathers. And as I dig down through the modern stuff, oh, there goes my wooshy. Um, oh, so much quieter. So there's a piece of feather here. This came off of a hat, and I'm going to show you how it was attached to a small piece of millinery wire. You can see that, how it's stitched on, and that would allow the milliner to bend the feather. Now, I don't remember if there was a tip to this feather or if it was just this piece. Long time ago. Now we're getting into the really old stuff. Now this one, we, es we estimate this one, it could be 40s because these feathers were really popular, but m my inclination is to say pre-First World War. Edwardian. It's really difficult to date a feather. But what's really interesting about this feather, and as you can see, it's very, very bent. It's been mounted onto wire, and it has this leather end to it that's been hand stitched on. And on this side, you can see, now that is the natural spine of the feather. And you can see very thick cotton, almost like a buttonhole twist type of thread. And it's been worked into this shape. And this shape, I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see it. This kind of shape was really popular for Edwardians. This very, like, think Titanic very big, luscious feather. Um, 
there is another worked feather. Now, this makes a plume. There, there isn't really a spine like the other feathers where you see the spine. This has been worked into this shape like a little pom-pom in a way. When you feel it, there's actually a hard thing in the center. And then this has been covered with wool felt. So I don't know if you can, it's very black. So it's very difficult to tell. And that's just been stitched on by hand. This is all done by hand. And maybe one day I'll do one. And you can find out it takes like four hours. And this was a popular thing, really stopped being popular in the 50s where this sort of exuberant feather thing, you'd see it occasionally in the 60s, but this sort of feather pom-pom to this size started to decline in favor. Um, there's not too much more in here. There's another one of these worked feathers. However, instead of it being, now I don't know if this was a repair, but instead of it being a leather cover, it clearly has been broken at some point. This, this is a very, big feather, probably the tail or one of the major feathers off the wing because the spine is so thick. And they've used what kind of looks like clothes, hanger, wire, and chenille yarn. Um, it's not, it's not pipe cleaner, if that's the word I'm looking for. So again, built the same way. Um, it's showing signs of age. And I don't know if you can tell, put it over against my cheek. Do you see that little knot? It's not really a knot. It's sort of like, it's starting to disintegrate and slide in a weird way. Definitely showing a lot of age. Sometimes things get eaten in weird ways. There is a possibility that these were knotted for that look. So that, if that's not age, it's knotting and then it's all hand done. And it's kind of difficult to tell because it's not, it's not evenly done. So maybe it was later, somebody was playing. I don't know. These were given to me by somebody. Again, this one is another one that's been broken. Potentially it broke off the hat. This is, this is several feathers, probably six, maybe a few more, all mounted together to create this very thick tail. And I know I'm wearing black, it's super helpful, but they'd like to do things where it sits around the hat, not necessarily that, although some women would, but it might sit in that concept. And then at the very, very bottom, I have another sort of plume, which has seen better days. Unfortunately, it's lost a lot of its feathers. Um, you can see the little sort of, it's very flattened pom-pom shape and then it's got this sort of skirting around it, I think, to almost looks like a flower. It's very reminiscent of a, a spider mom type of looks beautiful, but it's falling apart in one of my favorite colors. And then we've got something you don't see very often, although you can still get it from millinery supply. I tend to not use it. Um, this is in sad shape. However, it's very architectural. Sometimes this is called burnout. Uh, they've kind of burnt all the fluff off, but they burn it through a chemical process. So you, you still retain the shape, oh goodness, the shape of the feather. And you see how it's actually split. So you only have one half of the feather instead of both halves. And then they do the burnout process which takes all the fluff away. So you get just kind of like these spines that are a bit like grass. And then I think, oh, there's another, there's another one of these flower plumes with lots of stuff attached to it that have been flattened for the last 50 odd years or more. And they would, we would steam them and potentially mount them to something if somebody's willing to, to do that. Now the last thing, one of my favorite things to use, which I don't use very often, are pheasant tails. These are only 14 inch. Um, People really enjoy these. These are modern. I bought them maybe about 15 years ago in New York City. Uh, they can be bent. These are the natural color. Uh, you can get four foot. You can get five foot if you're really lucky, which would be really annoying to anybody walking behind you. But I can also get really small ones, and I really enjoy working with these. And they're, they're quite dramatic, and you're guaranteed to poke the eye out of your 
your person standing next to you, especially if you're as short as I am. So I think that is the end of the box. It does look like the end of the box. So thank you for coming to another one of my unboxing videos and hopefully I'll do a few more. Bye for now.